All right, we've talked about how to evaluate a limit by looking at its graph, right, following the path. Whether there's a hole or even a vertical asymptote, we can figure out what the limit is. We've talked about using our table of values, our calculator, to evaluate limits. Now let's talk a little bit more about our algebraic approach. How can we figure out what the limit is without always looking at the picture or doing a table of values? Well, there are certain limit rules that we can use to help us algebraically evaluate a limit. They're kind of confusing, but I want you to kind of look through all of these different rules. What they kind of say is that I can kind of take limits and do it in pieces. For example, this one, rule number two. If I have the limit as x approaches a, and I have two pieces added together, instead of doing the two pieces added together and then applying the limit, I can do the limit of the first piece, I can do the limit of the uh, second piece, and then I can simply add those two answers together. Same idea with multiplication. Instead of doing a multiplication problem all in one and then applying the limit, I can do the limit of each little piece and then multiply them together. Same thing with division and so on, okay? So read through those rules, but really this is just a big old fancy list of saying you can evaluate a limit by doing direct substitution. If I ask you to evaluate a limit as x approaches 2, you should be able to plug in 2 to your problem and see what happens. If you substitute in a 2 and you get out a 7, well, hey, guess what? That's what our limit approaches as we approach x equals 2. We go to 7. Now, if you plug in 2 and you get a funky answer, we'll talk about what that means in the next video. But let's do a few of these ones. Let's use our limit rules to evaluate some limits. So look at example 4 with me. It says here, suppose the limit um, as x approaches 2 of f of x is 3. So they already told you the limit for f of x. It's 3. And the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is 4. Use the limit rules to find the following limits. So for a, it asks us to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x plus 5 times g of x. That's a whole bunch of stuff going on. We need to take g of x, multiply it by 5, add it to f of x, and then apply the limit. And I don't even know what f of x or g of x is. Well, our limit rules say we don't really have to know, and we can break these up into little pieces. Instead of this big old problem all at the same time, what I can do is really just evaluate the limit of each little piece. I can first figure out what the limit is as x approaches 2 of f of x. Then I can figure out what the limit is as x approaches 2 of g of x, and multiply that answer by 5 because I needed to do that here. Then I can add those two quantities together. So what is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x? Well, remember from up in the problem, it says that the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 3. So I can plug in a 3 there. And what is the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x? Well, it says from my problem that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is 4. So I can plug in a 4 there and then make sure I multiply it by the 5. 4 times 5 is 20 and 20 plus 3 is 23. So that means my answer for the limit as x approaches 2 of that big old problem is just 23. Let's do another one. Look at b. b says the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x squared over the natural log of g of x. A whole bunch of stuff going on. Let's do it in pieces instead. I should be able to break up the numerator into the limit of f as x approaches 2 of f of x, get an answer, and then square it. On the bottom, I can figure out what the limit is as x approaches 2 of g of x, and then apply the natural log. Let's do that. So what is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x? 3, right? And then 3 squared is 9, so my numerator is 9. And what is the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x? 4 and then I can apply the natural log. So I can say 9 divided by the natural log of 4. And depending on how they want your answer, making sure that you read the directions, you can put that in your calculator and round it to a certain decimal place, or if they ask you for exact answers, you can leave it just like that, 9 divided by the natural log of 4. Now you try one. Try this, try it number 2, and see if you can evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 for this problem. All right. Instead of doing that whole big old problem at once, you should have been able to separate it into small pieces by doing the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, doing the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, adding those two numbers together, and then making sure that you square the answer, 
because we need to make sure that we square it, right? The limit as we approach 2 of f of x is 3. The limit as we approach 2 of g of x is 4. And then I need to square uh, whatever's inside there. Making sure that I follow the correct order of operations, I'm going to do the inside the parentheses first. So 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 squared is 49. I can use my limit rules to break it up into smaller pieces so that I can evaluate a more complicated limit problem.